history was made and not for the right reasons as Donald Trump was arrested and arraigned before a Miami court. Trump, as ever, rebellious, brazened it out. In fact, he stopped by at a Cuban restaurant for photo ops as his supporters jeered. He, of course, pleaded not guilty in the classified documents case. Now, all of this is unfolding in the United States of America months before the 2024 election, where Trump is likely to become the Republican candidate taking on Joe Biden. All of these legal proceedings, it could seem, will weaken Trump's brand. But is that really the case? It may sound counterintuitive to say so, but could Trump actually gain an even greater following among his supporters because of what is unfolding in the United States of America at this moment? In other words, the big question is, can Trump be president again? Let's go across to one of our favorite newsmakers on this program. It's a great pleasure to welcome Joe Walsh back uh, to our show. Uh, Joe Walsh is, of course, someone who's also run for president. He is someone who has been a ferocious critic of Donald Trump and has had to break ranks with many in his own party to do so. Uh, Joe, good morning. It is good to see you when you saw these images of Trump in federal custody, arrested, arraigned, then, of course, predictably pleading not guilty. What was the first thing you thought as you saw these images unfold? Barke, good to be with you. My first thought was that this is going to be a very good day politically for him. Look, uh, yesterday was a very bad day legally for Donald Trump, but politically it was a very good day. Every indictment um, will only strengthen Trump, most certainly within the Republican Party, but possibly in the country at large. That may sound crazy, but that's true. So in a way, you, you, you share my feeling that every time he has a setback in the court, uh, it actually pushes him one inch closer towards not just getting the, the, the candidacy from the Republican Party, but actually being a strong candidate against Biden. Yeah, Barca, I've heard from a lot of Republicans. I'm a former Republican, but I've heard from a lot of Republicans in the past few days, many of whom are not his most devoted supporters. They think this is unfair. They have bought into Trump's narrative that he's being unfairly targeted by the Justice Department. Trump loves that, Barca. He loves to say that he's the victim. This indictment really helps him put forth that narrative. And what do you think? You said that people who have not been crazy about him are buying into his narrative. You've been a fierce critic. When you look at what's happening with the Justice Department, completely objectively, dispassionately, what do you think? Trump committed crimes. In America, no one's above the law. Uh, unlike what Joe Biden and Mike Pence and Hillary Clinton and uh, other government officials do have done, when they discovered they had classified top secret documents, they all turned them in. Donald Trump purposely took them and then purposely lied about them and then purposely obstructed the return of those classified documents. Now, Barca, those are all the facts that will come out in a court of law, which is why Trump will probably be convicted. But politically, everything I just said to you, no Republican voter either knows or understands. I want for uh, audiences outside of the United States of America to understand, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that even if Trump were to go to jail, theoretically, nothing in the law, in the U.S. law, can stop him from running for president. Is that correct? He could still be president of the United States from a jail cell. Trump could be president from a jail cell if, if the law allows him that, technically. Yes, and, and even beyond technically, uh, Barca, I believe that every indictment strengthens Trump. I don't believe that there'll be any resolution of this arraignment, of this uh, indictment before the election. I don't think most of Trump's legal troubles will be dealt with before the election. And, and Trump will do his best to delay this as far as he can. And Barca, I'll bet you a million dollars that you and I will be together in two months again when Donald Trump is indicted again. 
down in the state of Georgia. So in a weird way, this is really still the beginning. Let me ask you this. Is he now pretty much the front runner to be the candidate for the Republicans? Or could there be a toss up there with with DeSantis? No, the Republican Party is his and the nomination is his. It's always been his unless something very dramatic happens. And dramatic like what? I don't want to speculate in an irresponsible way, but dramatic like what? Well, and and I've said this before, Barca, I believe this. Ron DeSantis, Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, all of these challengers to Trump, they don't really believe they can beat Donald Trump. In fact, they're not really trying to beat Donald Trump. They're hoping and praying that Donald Trump is not able to run. They're hoping and praying that the justice system or a heart attack will take Trump out of commission. That's the bet they've made. I don't think that will happen, but that's what they're hoping for. So let's look ahead at this scenario. There are multiple sort of legal proceedings against Trump. He goes into 2024, you know, with this legal baggage, but politically stronger. And then his opponent is is the incumbent, Biden. Where do things stand today? Who has who has the advantage? Well, I'll tell you what, Barker, this is why, and it frightens me to say this, I really believe that if Trump is the nominee, there's a really good chance he could get reelected. A lot of that has to do with Trump, but a lot of that has to do with Biden and the Democrats. My former political party is so crazy and so anti-democracy, we overlook a lot of the problems the Democrats have. Joe Biden is old. Uh, The American people don't want Joe Biden to run again. Uh, No other Democrat really is at the fore. The Democrat Party is oftentimes out of touch with a lot of what concerns average Americans. So the Democrats have their problems. And my fear is a lot of this legal stuff with Trump will just sort of be baked in And then it's Trump, Biden. And boy, I'll tell you what, Barca, that that could go either way. Tell me this. uh, What are some of the issues on which you think uh, the Democrats and the Biden administration in particular are out of touch with the pulse of people? You know, some of the things I pick up on my trips to America, people are not, you know, even moderates are not happy necessarily with the Biden policy, for example, on on immigrants. Is that a hot potato issue? What are the sort of two or three top issues in which you think the Biden government or the Biden administration is making a mistake? Well, Bark, it's a great question. Um, And part of the problem is Joe Biden who's done a pretty good job, and I say that not as a Democrat, at his age, he just cannot communicate anymore. A big part of a president's job is to use the bully pulpit and communicate. Biden's too old to do that. Um, uh, The price of gas, the price of inflation, um, the, the state of the economy. Most average Americans, Barca, will tell you that things are worse now than they were when Trump was elected. You combine that with the fact that a lot of Democrats talk about issues that most Americans don't care about, issues of gender, a lot of these other cultural issues that Americans don't necessarily care about right now. They're, they care about you know getting through every day and week. The Democrats need to do a much better job talking about that. Well, the Biden administration and the Democrats have often sold uh, sort of their economic policies as, as as something to boast about. You're saying that in daily lives of Americans, that's not how it's panning out. No, in, in, in the polling of, of Americans, and it's been this way ever since Joe Biden got elected, most appear, Americans don't think and don't feel like they're doing well economically and that the country's doing well economically. Now, the statistics will belie a lot of that. So then why is that? And I think the problem is the Democrats have done a lousy job of selling what they've done. And you can say what you want about Trump and the Republicans, and they do lie and they do demagogue, but they get out there and they sell stuff. Somehow the Democrats have to compete with that. 
Let me ask you a final question. You made it pretty clear that you think Trump is in this with a chance, uh, that there's a good there's a good possibility, not just that he will get the candidacy, but that he could be the president of the United States of America again. How does that make you feel this morning? Uh, Barka, I'd leave the country and a lot of people would. You you, you mean I, that? You, you, are you serious? I, I'm, I'm not the only one. I'm very serious because, look, Donald Trump has a list of enemies. And if Donald Trump is reelected, Barka, he'll go after his enemies. It will be four years of retribution. Uh, I, w- I am on that list. Uh, so, so, so that combined with the fact that if he's reelected, he'll do whatever he can to end our democracy. They tr- he tried to do it last time. Imagine what he'd do if he had that power again. And you are telling everybody this morning in the U.S. that this could happen. This is real. I think the odds of that happening are much, much higher than all the so-called smart people think. All the smart people, Barca, say Donald Trump will win the nomination, but there's no way he'll ever get elected again. Hooey, there's a very good chance he can get reelected. Well, that certainly gives us pause today, Joe. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I hope you don't have to leave the country, but there's some time between now and 2024, and we will look forward to having you back with us. Thank you. Take care. Have a great day, Joe Walsh. Thank you. Thank you. We started Mojo right here in this basement. Just four people, four. And now we're about to hit our first 1 million subscribers. So this is to say thank you to all of you for your support, for your respect, and for your encouragement. We've always gone to where the story is. During the pandemic, when television's big anchors were hunkered down in their studios or at their homes, we hit the road. We traveled from Delhi to Kerala, covering 30,000 kilometers in a small car, reporting from inside ICUs and inside slum tenements. Whether it's flash floods or war zones, we've always put our boots on the ground. In fact, we're just back from Punjab, tailing the Khalistani fugitive Amrit Pal Singh. And through all of this, we have always put you, the people, first. In an age of partisan polarized media where most journalists are either chamcha ya morcha, we believe the story is sacred and the truth of the story is what matters. And now as we get ready for the next step, we need your help. Become a Mojo member and get first access to all our big interviews. Get a chance to ask our newsmakers questions. Get a chance to write and report for us for both our website and our channels. And also, interact with me and my colleagues directly through AMA sessions. Literally, ask me anything. Click on the join now right next to the subscribe button. And yes, also subscribe if you haven't yet. And become a Mojo member for just 159 rupees a month. Hope to see lots of you in our community. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.